been thinking about this presentation in relation to the two we've just heard, um, and I'm not sure what you're going to think. I hope it's relevant, um, but I wanted to just start with a case study that I haven't put in here. Um, and I was asked to help, uh, it was the University of the Third Age archaeology group, carry out some field walking. And I knew nothing about them, and I wanted to find out more, so I was asking them, I literally knew nothing, where are you based? How many of you are there? Um, and I also, you know, do you have any friendly landowners? What sort of thing are you thinking of? I also asked them, do you have any research questions in mind? And the email that came back was, what's a research question? So I think that's something we need to think about. So the question, what is community archaeology, is not a new question, but it is one that matters when trying to understand what motivates people to do it. Understanding what it is is important when trying to predict outputs and justify practice. Community archaeology will only be successful if the outputs match the predicted aims and expectations of those involved. There are currently three main, quite different definitions that, that are used, and we've already heard about these. Collaborative research, where the collaboration of partners is an integral part of the research method. Uh, a top-down sort of driven phenomenon that's carried out often by archaeological companies who work with volunteers and the public. And it's often about sharing information rather than co-creation. Or bottom-up. Um, and this is often described as research driven and conducted by non-professional archaeologists, often through archaeology societies. So I'm quickly going to discuss these in greater detail. Um, by looking at how people actually practice community archaeology. And I'll go on to briefly discuss why they do it and where I think we should go from here. So in theory, well, theoretical literature describes community archaeology as a research methodology. Archaeological research can be strengthened by archaeologists working in collaboration with non-archaeologists. All collaborators bring knowledge to a partnership. Predominantly, the literature on community archaeology uses examples where archaeologists collaborate with indigenous peoples who may have a different concept of the past. In the UK, however, most community archaeology is conducted and researched uh, by white middle class archaeologists, whether they're professional or not. There are not many different ways of viewing the past within this collective, and therefore, community archaeology is often not thought about as a distinct method incorporating these different viewpoints. However, it does still occur. It's just a bit more overt. The Dorset Diggers um, call themselves a community archaeology group because they believe that everybody should be able to have a hands-on experience of the past. They're a relatively recently formed group which developed out of evening classes that were run by a professional archaeologist. Oh, sorry. He's still heavily involved in an advisory and training capacity this I consider to be collaborative community archaeology. Now it's time for this slide. The East Dorset Antiquarian Society are a fairly large society that formed in the 80s, again as a result of evening classes. They describe themselves as an amateur society, and they are some very experienced archaeologists within their ranks. None of these individuals get paid for their involvement, and they don't openly advertise themselves elsewhere as professional. As a society, EDAS do consult with professional archaeologists um, on an as-needed basis, and they do pay specialists when, to help them when required. And so in my opinion, this is a, a bottom-driven practice that has become collaborative. However, the group don't consider themselves to be community archaeology. They've been excavating a Roman villa, whereas I was informed by their site director, they would not be doing community archaeology next year. Instead, they're, going to uh, they're planning on finishing the excavation. What she was implying was that, in contrast to previous years, they were not going to host uh, schools visits or hold open days. This is an example of a belief that community archaeology is a top-down phenomenon, and that even though EDAS are a bottom-up driven group, they don't consider themselves to be community archaeology. So as part of my research, I forgot to mention I'm also a PhD student. Um, and as part of my research, um, as well as do looking at these case studies, um, I've been interviewing a wide range of archaeologists. I don't have time to go into the full sort of rationale behind the interviews, um, but my opening question to professional archaeologists has been, what can, you tell, uh, can you tell me what community archaeology you're involved in? Most people provided me with a, a list of several different ways in which they felt they were involved in community archaeology, and I've tried to categorise these 
into um, fairly sort of broad brush categories. <coughs> so there were lots of references to archaeology societies. But what does this mean? Looking at the comments um, about the societies in greater detail, I could see that half of these examples referred to collaboration. For example, they were things such as um, the X project, working with the Y group and the local metal detecting society who discovered this object. A big sort of research fieldwork based around that discovery. I've deliberately kept these non-specific because I've not been interviewing that many people and I don't want to give away identities. Um, not because anything I'm saying here is controversial, but it might end up being in my final research. Um, or you can see um, it is community in the base, it is totally uh, voluntary, unpaid, ground up organisation. But I tend to encourage them to do the projects that I would like them to do because of my own personal interest. Perhaps you could argue that's not ideal collaboration, but nonetheless, it's still sort of about the co-production of research. The other half of the examples um, given to me in the interviews about societies didn't really mention collaboration or imply collaboration, but they're much more about enabling access. This is quite a different concept to working together. And a lot of the time, it's about who has control of the information. It's community archaeology from the top down. Although, of course, there were some people who do both. Um, and sometimes the distinctions were quite blurred. To return to how the interviewees were involved in community archaeology, there are a lot of references to activities that I've collectively grouped under the term outreach. This was not just to societies, but to the wider public in general. Um, and they included open days, guided walks, giving talks, that sort of thing. Um, this is top-down community archaeology. So to go back to this slide again, if we were to split the examples from the interviews into the three definitions of community archaeology I outlined at the start of the talk, we end up with a graph that looks a bit like this. There is no bottom-up archaeology because by its pro definition professional archaeologists shouldn't be involved. But overwhelmingly the majority of the examples that people came up with were top-down. Whether you want to argue that more people are involved in top-down archaeology or that more people think community archaeology is top-down, I don't think matters. And there's a strong perception that community archaeology is a top-down phenomenon. The primary way that the archaeologists and in interviews conducted collaborative community archaeology was in conjunction with societies. There are other ways in which this happens. They didn't come out in my interviews. Um, they do include things such as citizen science and crowdsourcing. Um, I'm not going to talk about them now because I think they'll come up later, but it's important to note them. Within the interviews, I was also able to examine what archaeologists thought was valuable about community archaeology, but with a focus on the societies. And there were four dominant values, benefits for the community, personal benefits for archaeologists, that's in that included career development, um, public support for archaeology, and impact on the physical archaeology as well. If these are true, the values that come from community archaeology, are they likely to be enhanced through top-down community archaeology or collaborative archaeology, or both. One thing that also wasn't mentioned, um, and I haven't pulled out here, although it was mentioned quite a lot in interviews, <coughs> is the issue of funding. The Heritage Lottery Fund has significantly affected how community archaeology is practiced, but again, I don't want to preempt a presentation later. So, to conclude, in theory, community archaeology is described as collaborative research. However, in practice, it's often top-down. Therefore, I would argue that the practice of community archaeology, I've just said that, is no, often no longer about collaborative research, but is in fact driven by professional archaeologists. So what does this mean? How should we think about community archaeology? Should it be a wide-ranging term that encompasses collaboration, top-down and bottom-up? Should we accept this shift that we're conducting top-down archaeology, or should we reclaim community archaeology as a research method? I'm of the opinion personally that having too wide a definition confuses things, especially when we also use the term public archaeology to describe many of the same things. Therefore, I can see two ways forward. We reclaim archaeology as research conducted in, in collaboration, 
as has been demonstrated in the literature and through our own experiences, I assume I'm preaching to a converted uh, audience here, we know that this will increase the value to the participants and the quality of research will not be affected. If we can convince everybody else it's a serious research method, it will gain understanding and respect from the rest of the sector and may even attract funding from research sources. Now, although this sounds lovely, it's going to be tough. It, it's not going to be easy. And we may have to accept that the community might have other ideas. Or is the decision out of our hands? Should we admit that we're conducting top-down community archaeology and stop pretending otherwise? Community archaeology is a social and political entity and we are using it fully to our advantage. If we were to admit this, would we then have to call it something else? Outreach? Public archaeology? Would it then still be able to access its current funding? Personally, I'm in this for the long game. I think community archaeology should be a research method, but I urge you to think your motivations for conducting it. Are you doing it to improve your project, to get funding, because it's fun, or for a moral obligation to share results? And are you honest about this? Could your outcomes be improved by collaborating more on any part of the project? I'm not implying that all archaeology projects that involve the public should be collaborative, but I hope that by reassessing what we do under the banner of community archaeology, and by being honest about it, we can make community archaeology stronger. Thank you.